Security Basics – Malicious Software A computer can be thought of as consisting of an operating system, some stuff, and active processes. The operating system manages and keeps track of the stuff. The operating system organizes and separates the stuff. Some stuff is valuable. Some stuff is just stuff. Operating systems also manage the active processes. Processes actively read stuff. Oh. And processes actively write stuff. The behavior of a process is largely defined by a program, which is more stuff managed by the operating system. The program controls the actions taken by a process. However, the behavior of the process can also be affected by the stuff that the process reads. The process is a shifty character indeed. When good stuff goes bad. Not all of the stuff that controls the actions of a process is good stuff. Sometimes what appears to be a good program contains a subversive component called a Trojan horse. A Trojan horse can subvert the process to behave in ways not expected by the people who normally use the program. For example, the Trojan horse could copy secret stuff into the regular stuff accessible to a bad guy. Often, a well-intentioned program must read potentially dubious stuff to do its job. For example, a web server must accept web requests from any old source, and some of these sources can be hostile and malicious. The good program that controls the actions of the process may actually contain errors that can be exploited by deliberately constructed malicious stuff. This turns a good process bad. Once hijacked by bad stuff, a process can be instructed to turn good stuff into more bad stuff. Often, hijacked processes behave as vandals, leaving their mark. Or worse, as hooligans, just wrecking the joint. Worse still, a hijacked process may want to enlarge the party by spreading their maliciousness to other computers. Probably the most familiar example of these phenomena is an email worm. What might we mean by saying that a program is okay? How can we know that a program won't cause a process to do bad things? How can you tell if a program contains a Trojan horse? In general, you cannot. A Trojan horse can be extremely small, simple, and difficult to find, even if you know what is there and how it works. A small and simple Trojan horse can become very sophisticated with the aid of ordinary looking stuff that happens to have been constructed by an attacker. Most computers contain millions of instructions within dozens of programs modified by hundreds of programmers over handfuls of years. Which ones might contain a Trojan horse? Which ones contain exploitable flaws? And while you sort that out, Note that the operating system itself is a bunch of programs often consisting of millions of instructions written by hundreds of programmers over, well, you get the idea. We've seen examples of malicious software behaving as vandals, troublemakers, hooligans, and rapscallions, causing mayhem and general unhappiness. Potentially more devastating is malicious software that achieves a well-planned and targeted goal with stealth. Once subverted, a bad process can lay low, quietly and patiently awaiting further instructions. perhaps resulting in an organized and timely attack ganging up on and overwhelming some other computer on the internet. This is known as a distributed denial of service attack, one of the many sneaky things a subverted process can accomplish when undetected. Fortunately for us, though, we have our access control policy well defined and the means to enforce it. What could possibly go wrong? Subverted processes can defeat discretionary access controls. Some computers are shared between multiple users and contain some shared stuff and some stuff that should not be shared. As part of its organizing and separating stuff, an operating system often associates access control lists with stuff. The access control lists, or ACLs, limit who can access which stuff. For example, this ACL only permits Alice to read her stuff. Joe's process is prevented from reading Alice's stuff by the ACL associated with Alice's stuff. ACLs enforce what is known as discretionary access control policies. 
the distribution of Alice's stuff is up to Alice's discretion, and that of the processes working on her behalf. This ACL permits any user's processes to read and write the associated stuff. For example, Joe's process could read this stuff. What if the program that controls Alice's process contains a Trojan horse? Alice's intention has been subverted because Joe can now read her stuff. Note that the operating system is behaving properly, controlling access to stuff as defined by the ACLs. Even if Alice's program does not contain a Trojan horse, it could contain flaws exploitable by maliciously constructed stuff that it reads. Now the process is no longer working on Alice's behalf, though she thinks it is. The use of ACLs to protect Alice's stuff works so long as Alice's processes behave as Alice intends them to behave. Many programs contain flaws that can be exploited by maliciously constructed data. And this is no less true for programs that are supposed to provide a security function. Subverted operating systems can defeat mandatory access controls. Some operating systems enforce mandatory access control policies to control the flow of stuff within the computer by limiting which stuff a process can read and write. These operating systems can prevent a subverted process from reading and writing stuff in violation of the policy. So this kind of policy enforcement does not depend on the proper behavior of processes, as did the discretionary policy enforcement illustrated in the previous ACL example. However, the operating system may contain flaws. Or it may contain a deliberately planted small and virtually undetectable trap door. When triggered, the trapdoor leads to the subversion of the operating system itself. The subverted operating system can then be used to violate the very policy it is intended to enforce. And since mandatory controls are often used to protect high-value information, massive loss can occur without anyone realizing it is happening. That is the thing about a well-planned attack using malicious software. You never know what happened. You just know that suddenly it is game over.